Hello and welcome to News Click. We're going to discuss the latest reports which are coming out. I must confess they are rather confused on the Balakot airstrikes and what were the bombs that were used, what are the satellite imagery that we are seeing. Raghu, you know, this has been ongoing, what I would say, in the heat of the war. There were a lot of claims and counterclaims. But the fog of war, even if the heat of war has uh, dissipated somewhat, the fog of war still remains. Yeah, uh, and it will remain until uh, the government releases whatever satellite imagery, aerial photography, the Indian Air Force must have done damage assessment after the strike. Any Air Force would do that and they were bound to have done it. They would have handed over this to the government and Air Force spokespersons have clearly said it's up to the government to release it or not. You know, here Chief Marshal Danwa made something, uh, made a statement which is very interesting. He said, we report on targets, what, them, what targets we have hit. We do not talk about the bodies. Right. So this body talk, which started actually by the foreign ministry uh, spokesperson, the, spokesperson, the, the secretary, secretary, in fact, yes. Gokhale. Gokhale. He said that we have actually caused damage yes. and we have uh, eliminated. A number of terrorists, handlers, etc., etc. He went into quite lurid Details. Uh, details. Now, of course, at that time, the only knowledge we would have had would be the aerial one. That's right. And uh, again, to what extent we would have a real-time information of the aerial damage yeah. itself is an open question. But certainly this kind of details, who all we have quote-unquote eliminated, would have been, shall we say, rather imaginative rather than based on, the, on any factual and report. You would, for that, you would actually require ground uh, intelligence, human intelligence, uh, to give you this kind of uh, information. And it is very doubtful that at the present uh, state of things that uh, R&AW has that kind of uh, resources on the ground in Balakot. Look, let's look at what has been the satellite imagery, yeah. uh, which is in public domain, which yeah. is, of course, commercial satellite imagery. As we know today, uh, less than a meter resolution satellite image is available, imagery is available from commercial sources of a number of uh, sure. agencies. Uh, Reuters has released the Planet Labs uh, satellite right. imagery about four days back. They have said it's 72 centimeter resolution which means it's a less than a meter resolution right. and it shows that at least on what it can be seen that there is no significant damage that has that can be seen yeah. which would seem to indicate the two following things either those buildings were not hit some other targets in the Jabatop forest area which could have been sheds might have been hit or India made a demonstrative uh, example that we can hit within Pakistan, we can hit a target if we want, but we don't want to create loss of lives. These are the two possibilities. And uh, it is very difficult to accept that the Bagdrasa complex, which is really a kilometer away from Jabatop, that from the imagery plus from what we know, and we had an earlier Australian imagery which had also come, which also gave a very similar picture. It's very difficult to accept that the Madrasa buildings were really hit. Well, it looks as if from some of the satellite imagery that if what were used were penetration munitions, they seem to have gone through the roof. There's sufficient indication that there's damage to the roof, that they've gone through the roof. Now, the theory which is being peddled is that these uh, bombs went through the roof, they would have penetrated the building, penetrated the earth and exploded from inside. Even if that were the case, unless they were very low yield weapons, you would not expect the walls to remain standing. Uh, so, but at least with some scorched uh, definitely. walls, you would see yeah. some damage to some the damage. walls. There is a little evidence of fire scorching, that kind of thing, which has led to speculation that may have been fuel air 
explosives inside the weapon. In either case, the yields appear to have been small, which would lend themselves to the second of your uh, suppositions that the idea was to demonstrate that it could be done without causing overwhelming damage. Now, here is the other issue that the Reuters personnel or the reporters were at the site and there is no at least that we can talk about. There does not seem to be indication on the ground from the, that area nearby from the villagers and others, from what they report, that there has been substantive dad casualties. So the casualty part is rather yes, difficult although, to substantiate. Although the only thing uh, lending some credence to the Indian version of the damage uh, done is the fact that at least till this morning's reporting, uh, international correspondents in the press have still been prevented from the hill road that leads up to the uh, madrasa. So, what is the reason for preventing people if, as uh, is claimed in a large section of the Pakistani media, that only some trees have been damaged and a crow has been killed, uh, then it would seem to me that even showing that crow would have been of advantage for Political Pakistani, advantage. that's right, uh, to the Pakistani uh, narrative. So something seems to have happened uh, there. We are not certain what, but uh, it is not of the magnitude that uh, was being proclaimed here. And it is perhaps not as insignificant as is being made out in Pakistan. You know, looking at it differently, the government of India has a number of satellite imagery uh, capabilities. Yeah including, uh, as we are aware of, what NTRO That's right. has launched, That's right. which has, again, less than a meter resolution, right. Right. probably better resolution than yeah. what Planet Lab has. And it has also a number of other civilian That's satellite right. imagery, right. which all of them are jointly That's done right. by our space agency, ISRO, as well as no, NTRO, NTRO, who are responsible. That part That's of it has been taken right. away from RAW, and it's really the... Yeah. Per, the the domain of NTRO. Yeah. None of this has been released, which yeah. is quite interesting. Shall we say Absolutely. the dog that didn't bark of Absolutely. Sherlock Holmes kind? Absolutely. And I think that is what ultimately is going to uh, uh, swing the narrative, uh, shall we say. It looks to me that the overbearing emphasis of the government is on domestic public opinion rather than on international opinion. If they were bothered about international opinion, they would have released satellite uh, imagery. But they can continue with this uh, harangue uh, in India on domestic public opinion, saying, Mardia, we have done this. Khus, khus we have done that. We've done that. Mardia, because who will question it? And if you question it, they will say, you're, you're questioning the armed forces, you're, you're anti-national. You're actually on Pakistan side. Pakistan side, etc. So I think given that, and since elections are now uh, literally around the corner, uh, this is a strategy that uh, I think the ruling party would think it goes in their favor, irrespective of what international uh, opinion says. Irrespective, irrespective of what the imagery might show. That's right. <clears throat> the second set of questions really is, or you've already raised it, what are the kind of bombs that were used? Initially, with the reports, again, all unconfirmed sources, the government seems to be have been leaking like the devil, yeah. but no public attribution has ever been given. It seems to be spice platform or pots, as you have discussed earlier. And uh, on this bombs, initially they were talked of laser guided 1000 kg bombs. Right. Now laser guided 1000 kg bombs would have caused much more yeah, damage. Absolutely. Now the figure seems to be even 50 to 70 kgs. It seems after the imagery has been, the images have been released, the, ton, the kg size of the bombs have been brought down. Could well be. Uh, frankly, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I think there is this, uh, the story about having taken revenge, having eliminated so many terrorists, 
that was a political narrative which the government wanted to uh, get across. But in military strategic terms, uh, I think it doesn't matter very much uh, how many people were killed, what kind of weapon was used. The point is that the Air Force has shown its ability and its capacity, the intent to be able to strike inside Pakistan. Pakistan. I think if you just look at it from the strategic point of view, that was the message that was sought to be conveyed militarily and strategically. The rest of it, I think, is governmental embellishment. Uh, part of it, as you said, is bombing the Indian public opinion. That. Now, leaving that part of it out, if we look at the strategic part, now it could be argued that if India had actually killed 300 to 400 people in the madrasas, and let's face it, madrasa students are not all terrorists. No. They are also, shall we say, young people who have come or the parents have sent them. And therefore, killing 300 to 400 of the madrasa students would have had a huge Absolutely. political repercussion Absolutely. within Pakistan. Absolutely. Similarly, if Pakistan's response was to hit Indian military targets in yes. Kashmir, then also we would have seen a huge right. repercussion here. So shall we say that both sides were interested in demonstrative action, That's right. that escalation but demonstrative action That's right. within uh, shall we say certain uh, red lines yes. and this is roughly what seems to have happened? I think so. Uh, let's look at it this way. India wanted to show that it can strike inside Pakistan and that therefore India is prepared to and has the capacity to shift the normal, uh, to move away from strategic restraint and to show this enhanced capability and willingness. Now, that was the strategy from the Indian uh, side to establish the new normal. If Pakistan had not hit back, then the new normal would have been established. And precisely because of that, Pakistan had to strike back saying, this normal is unacceptable to us. This we are not taking as normal. So any further effort along those lines will invite a counter strike along these lines. And as you say, both sides, I think, calibrated their strikes in such a way that the demonstration effect was more visible than the actual uh, military impact. So after the surgical strike originally, yes. uh, we know that Pakistan did not demonstratively respond. Right. So therefore, a quote unquote new normal where we can strike beyond the LOC was sought to be established. Right. This time, that is something that has not happened. There has been a response. So it would seem to indicate between two nuclear powers, this kind of demonstrative strikes, yeah. though India said it didn't cross the LOC, it fired from this side, we're not going to get into that debate. But nevertheless, bombs did cross. That's so right. therefore, that's, that's right. a good I mean, point. You hit a target yeah. uh, it's a well good, inside Pakistan. It's a good point so. whether the, flood, the right. aircraft went or didn't go. Doesn't matter. That really doesn't matter. Yeah. It does seem that this so-called controlled escalation that we are talking about in the new normal, which a lot of the strategic, strategic community have been tom tomming are actually dangerous given the fact that two nuclear powers with the ability in case it conflict, conflagration builds up to the extent of actually endangering life on earth. That's always the case when you have an escalatory uh, action that the escalation does not lead to an escalatory spiral. Uh, and that's very difficult to uh, prevent in uh, an atmosphere of conflict and uh, uh, retaliatory action because they stick for that and they stick for that and then it can keep bouncing along and climb. Uh, and also, yeah. individuals can actually take decisions, can take decisions which are which not are, under your control. That's right. Uh, the only thing that I would say at the end of the day is, uh, this may have focused international attention a little more sharply on the potential dangers, not just of an India-Pakistan conflict, 
but on the potential trigger effect for an Indo-Pakistan conflict of continued cross-border uh, terror activities. And to that extent, if it has succeeded in drawing international attention to this, there may have been a strategic uh, payoff, but with the negative payoff of not having established a new normal. But Raghu, that's the other part. Internationalizing India-Pakistan issue also carries the risks for yeah, India absolutely. of internationalizing Kashmir, absolutely. which Indian government has been refusing to absolutely. do. So therefore, absolutely. we seem to have got Trump absolutely. into credit for the de-escalation. Right. We have Saudi Arabia, which is actively intervening in India-Pakistan issues. Right. So we are already, yes. in fact, seeking external, absolutely. shall we say, consultations. Absolutely. And you know, Raghu, the risk that this terror machinery that we are talking about in Pakistan is the terror machinery built by the United That's States, right. the Absolutely. Western agencies, Absolutely. and it still has a deep, deep connection with Saudi Arabia Absolutely. even today. Absolutely. So this is Absolutely. getting Saudi Arabia and the United States to be our in interlocutors with Pakistan Absolutely. will and also this, have the risk of Kashmir. And Kashmir. this is in fact the danger of this escalatory spiral is both India and Pakistan depend on early international intervention to prevent the escalation from going out of control. So it's not between India and Pakistan that the restraint is applied. The restraint is applied by dragging the international community into it, which as you rightly pointed out, is supposed to be not the Indian position, but it is. Today uh, seems to be becoming. It will be, and the more you have um, military action across the border, the sooner there will be international intervention. Uh, so this ghus ghus ke marenge yeah, exactly. kind of statements yeah. which the Prime Minister has made actually yes. is uh, good for election speeches, That's but right. could be dangerous That's for right. the peace as well as the risk of internationalizing the That's Kashmir right. issue. That's right. which Apparently, India is totally against. That's right. So that's the counter yeah. risk, shall we say, we carry. Yeah. Thank you very much, Raghu, for being with us and explaining to us, shall we say, the ramifications of the satellite imagery to what is it that we really bombed, what are the bombs we used. There is the fog of war still seems to continue on these issues. This is all the time we have for News Click today. Do keep watching News Click and our other episodes.